Aidan and, and Josh for some fairly fascinating insights there into, I suppose, the long-term future trends uh, in the, the food industry and, and where we're going. Uh, it's absolutely vitally important for all of us collectively to try and understand where we're going, and particularly as bankers stroke investors in the industry, to uh, get the knowledge and get that understanding uh, about wh what are the current trends and directions of the industry, what are the trends and directions that we need to support, and where we can assist and help uh, both the uh, initial producers, but much more importantly, uh, the value-added side and the value-added food side. I think there is a perception uh, fueled by some of the media out there that the banks in this country, all they ever did was fund property. Uh, I mean, Bank of Ireland and indeed the other banks have been involved in funding the agricultural sector and indeed funding the food sector uh, through many generations and indeed uh, through many, many iterations. And, and when we look at uh, some of the work that perhaps we did with the co-ops initially and, 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 and IBI corporate finance, our, our corporate finance arm, would have assisted with the flotation of most of the co-ops here in Ireland. And the business models are indeed with Greencore and the sugar company and the business models that those companies had when they started initially, uh, and when you compare them with uh, what John Maloney and Glan B is talking about earlier this morning, and you compare them with uh, uh, where they were when they were initially floated, it's quite clear that it is absolutely necessary for the financial sector and the financial industry to be in a position to understand and to support and to help these businesses develop. Because uh, without that funding and without that support, it is not possible for these companies to grow uh, and expand. And, and I suppose what we have seen over the course of the last, num uh, uh, the last 30, 40 years is that the banks have try to get that understanding, try to get that knowledge, not just at the initial food producer at the farmer level, but much more importantly uh, at, at uh, the food level and at the co-op and the, and the corporate level to help those uh, businesses uh, uh, develop and expand. And I suppose conferences like today, and one of the reasons that we're keen to be associated with today and why we're trying to support today, is that it provides us with an opportunity, and indeed everybody else here, with the opportunity to try and understand identify the trends in the marketplace, see where the industry is going and see where the business is looking to develop, and then much more importantly, see how we can help that and see how we can be in a position uh, to assist that, to try and understand, as Aidan is talking about there, as to how important the sustainability issue is going to be to consumers, to try and take some of the metrics or some of the measures that Josh is talking about there as to what consumers are looking for, because so many of the producers and companies that we are looking at are looking to sell into those European markets markets, they're looking to sell into the multiples and they're looking to sell globally. And it is equally important for us as bankers and in terms of helping to invest in those companies that we understand uh, what is happening in the marketplace so that we can help identify the winger, winners and much more importantly help identify those companies that we think uh, are not necessarily on the right track uh, and have those conversations and discussions uh, with them. Uh, so as I say, that is a, a, a key reason for our support uh, here today. I suppose in, in, in looking and talking today to a group such as this, it would be slightly remiss of me not to talk a bit about the Irish economy. I think we got some stats there from Josh where he talked about where the consumer was and what the consumer was thinking. Um, I think what we have seen is a very, very seismic and dramatic fall in the uh, Irish economy, as we all know, over the last number of years. We're probably looking at a GDP back from about 187, 188 billion down to perhaps 156, 157 billion. A fall in the GDP probably with the region of 16 or 17 percent. Um, and that has been very difficult for consumers. That has been very difficult for the country as a whole. Uh, but we would be of the view, and I think that has been, uh, has been endorsed perhaps by yesterday's exchequer returns, and we're beginning to see some of those green shoots, that the economy, if it is not quite turning, it is certainly bumping along the bottom at present. We would like to have uh, the optimism that it is turning. We are certainly seeing certain sectors uh, have improved and certain sectors looking uh, very much towards the future. But by and large, there isn't the sustained uh, all across the economy that, uh, that turn that we would like to see or that upturn. But certainly Certainly, we are, we are certainly at the bottoming out stage. I think uh, if any of you had a, uh, read Brendan Keenan's uh, article last week uh, in The Independent in the Thursday Supplement, Brendan tends to do a bit more of a reflective piece. And he talks about the three things that were lacking for the economy at present, the three Cs. We were looking for confidence, we were looking for consumption, and we were looking for credit. Uh, I think the key thing that is lacking is that confidence, and I think it's interesting when you look at Josh's statistics that he puts up there about where the consumer sees themselves at present, and by and large, the consumer is hugely fearful. 
the average person out there, the average Irish person is continually bombarded by these negative headlines, is continuously being bombarded uh, by, by threats of doom and gloom, and as a result is saving itself and saving the economy further and further into recession. This paradox of thrift that we call it. We are now at the situation whereby in 2006, 2007, the Irish consumer was saving about two or three cent of its after-tax euro. It's now saving, the Irish consumer is saving about 15 or 16 cents. So the savings ratio has pushed up to that 15 or 16 cent, and that's for the 1.85 million people employed in the economy. There's a huge talk about the unemployment level, but there's still 1.85 million people uh, employed in the economy. And what we need to get is that we need to get that confidence back into the economy, that confidence about the future, and then we need to get people getting out there and spending. And I think that that's absolutely key and vital uh, to trying to regenerate uh, this economy. I think Michael Noonan was somewhat derided in the media by indicating, I think it's about 10 days ago or 12 days ago, that he wanted consumers to get out there and start spending. But that is absolutely uh, what we need uh, the consumers uh, to do. I think there's been a lot of talk about the banking sector and where the banks are, uh, and there's still, uh, I suppose, some details to be worked out, but I think one of the things that can be clarified and will be clarified by the end of the month is that the banking sector will be, will be fully recapitalized by the end of July, and we will have one of, the most, uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, capitalized banking sector in Europe. I think uh, we would believe the banks are being overcapitalized, but what we do think is important is that uh, the market, uh, both the consumer market and the international markets, believe that we can draw a line under the banking situation and that the banking crisis in Ireland, very expensive and all as it was, and I'm not taking away from that point, that the banking crisis in Ireland is now, uh, is now at an end. I think what we can then do is we then turn to the, overlying, uh, the, the underlying economy and ask ourselves where we are going on the underlying economy. And as we've seen yesterday with the exchequer returns, by and large, the exchequer returns are coming in uh, on budget, uh, obviously some variations, and that would happen in any business on a month-to-month -month basis, but coming in on budget, and therefore the plans which, we're, which the government is looking for to reduce the deficit look at this juncture as if they're going to be met. It also means that unlike uh, perhaps some of our far uh, uh, eastern Mediterranean neighbours, that we're going to get a big tick from the Troika when they come on their next visit, and they're going to say, hang on guys, you guys are doing a good job, you're doing all the things that you said you would do, and that again will be a further boost for confidence. The other area where we've got, we have confidence and we should be continue to generate confidence is the manner in which our exporting sector is, is holding, not alone holding up but expanding and growing. And as we have a balance of payment surplus and a current account surplus where we're in the situation where effectively we're exporting and generating uh, more goods and services for the external market than we're importing and that the country is now on a sustainable basis, that is hugely important to the long-term future of this country and that is something that uh, that we as an Irish people can take great confidence in and hopefully can build on. That's what the international markets, when, I, when one is in London and you're talking to investment banks and you're looking at how people are seen uh, in Ireland, the fact that we have a balance of payment surplus, the fact that we have taken such a very strong force and uh, strong measures in trying to internally devalue, uh, devalue and not being able to, while not being able to devalue the currency, is being recognised and there is a very strong belief that as a result the Irish economy is in a much different situation to the Portuguese or to the Greek, uh, uh, or indeed Italian or Spanish uh, economies should they, head down that, that, um, should they head down that path. And when we look at the export sector uh, and when we look at uh, the key sectors that are doing well in Ireland, the two major sectors that are doing well in Ireland are the export sector and the agricultural sector. When we look across our book, the two areas, if we look across our lending book, the two areas of the domestic economy, so to speak, that are doing much better than anywhere else are the export sector, as I say, where, uh, which is growing probably about 7 or 8% on top of last year, and the agri sector. The agri sector has had a very impressive 2010. The agri sector, in terms of the farming, pure farming business and producer, went into uh, this downturn, into this recession with relatively light debt loads, perhaps having um, uh, much more painful experiences in previous downturns, are having much less certainty about their future. But the agri sector went in uh, with uh, relatively light debt levels compared to the rest of the economy, also has had a, a, an absolutely outstanding 2010. And I think Matt and the Farmers Journal have produced some stats or, or have reported on the CSO stats, which would look at the farming sector incomes probably up about 28 or 29 percent uh, on prior years. Now, that's after a fall in 2009, I acknowledge. But what we are seeing is that the agri-sector uh, is doing very well and has, uh, and has done very well. 
And I suppose one of the core messages that we want to get out today, uh, not just here but in, in general, is that the Bank of Ireland is very much open for business and is very keen to lend. There are lots of people who are uh, in the media and other commentators who are saying the reverse and I, 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 at every opportunity I get we are determined to uh, try and nail that on the head. Uh, we have no shortage of money to lend to the Irish economy and we are very much open for business. Consumer and business applications are down over 30% year to date in terms of what we are seeing is a reluctance on businesses and people to invest in their businesses uh, and we are seeing a reluctance for people to come forward with their ideas and that has led to a very, very significant reduction in credit demand but much more importantly has also led to a deleveraging of businesses as businesses are paying down debt and indeed consumers are paying down debt as they are fearful uh, for the future. One of the areas, as I say, where we have seen a growth, we have seen a growth in the pure agri side, on, uh, on the lower level, on the farmer level. Uh, we have funded so far this year, in the, in the five months to date, funded about 7,000 acres of land uh, in relatively small lots for farmers, which is about a 30% increase uh, on last year. So we're beginning to see farmers invest in their, invest in their business, probably in anticipation uh, uh, in the dairy side, certainly, of the abolition of quota levels, and also uh, with a bit more confidence uh, about the future, given the state of commodity prices and given the, the state of the markets. In terms of our book, our book in Ireland in the business banking side, where we call it business banking and agri, uh, we probably have about uh, lines of about 1.4 billion with only a billion drawn to the, uh, the farming side. On our corporate banking side, we are looking at a book now which in the corporate banking side would look at the larger food companies and the larger co-ops uh, of over 2 billion, which has grown almost threefold during the course of the last 10 years. So in terms of our emphasis and our expansion and our focus uh, on that, there's been a huge uh, emphasis from the bank uh, on that side with a view to trying to see how we can help uh, that sector expand uh, and grow. And it's one of the indigenous sectors that can expand and grow. And our corporate finance side, as I've indicated, uh, has been involved in a, a, a large number of the tra uh, transactions, uh, initially on the agri side, but more recently uh, uh, on the food side, whether that's working with Tato Foods or whether that's uh, working with Green Corps or, or, or others who are more uh, looking on the food side as opposed to the pure uh, uh, the pure agri side. In terms of the growth areas, and I suppose what we've heard today there from, from Aidan uh, and, and indeed from Josh, there's, there's trends coming down the track, there's new things happening in the marketplace, the consumer is changing, the marketplace is continuing to be more internationalized and we need to uh, get, get ready uh, for that. And I suppose there's there four things that we need to do, I believe, as a bank to try and assist that. I, I think firstly we need to demonstrate our appetite uh, I think, secondly, we need to uh, reorganize our sector specialisms uh, in the bank. I think, thirdly, we need to uh, expand and educate uh, the marketplace about the existing products that are available. And I suppose, finally, we need to try and identify what additional products we could make available uh, for both farmers and, indeed, uh, for the food industry. Uh, in terms of a demonstration uh, of our appetite, uh, I'm delighted to be in a position to announce today, and we, we, we will be announcing at this conference, the launch of an additional 200 million fund for the agri and food sector, an additional lending fund uh, for this year of an additional 200 million, uh, which we want to get out and get lent into the agri and food sector in 2011. Uh, we think that it's important to put a big number uh, on that to demonstrate our commitment, uh, and what we are determined to do is to help uh, farmers expand and grow. We anticipate there could be investment of up to 500 million in the pure uh, farmer side of the business uh, in 2011 and we are uh, prepared to try and support that to the tune of 200 million uh, uh, during the course of 2011. As some of you may know, we already have seed and venture capital funds out there which are directed towards the tech side, and this is one of the things that we are going to talk about. We have about 49 million of seed and venture capital funds uh, which are developed at food science, uh, med tech, uh, ag tech, or whatever, and that is an area which we are looking uh, to expand, and we run those in conjunction with Enterprise Ireland, and we will have additional, an additional tranche of venture capital funding which we will be announcing in the course of the next 10 or 15 days, which again is directed uh, at probably more the food science end of the business, but is certainly directed at trying to demonstrate that we are keen to assist these new and innovative businesses uh, get off the ground and direct and expand uh, uh, their operations. 
uh, and uh, we have already advertised and are in the, uh, in the processes of appointing a new head of agri and food in the business bank for Bank of Ireland. It's, it's, it's a role that we think, given the importance with Harvest 2020 and given the importance with uh, the cap reform coming up and uh, the new demands that are going to be uh, in the agri sector, uh, that we beef up and we staff up on that area and we will be appointing, uh, subject to finding the right candidate, uh, we're in the interview stage, appointing a new head of agri and food uh, over the course of the next four or five weeks. And say these are our, our steps that we in the bank are taking to demonstrate our commitment and to try and demonstrate uh, our willingness to assist and support uh, uh, th th this area of the Irish economy. I suppose what I, the second area where I think we need to assist and we need to develop is that we need to relook at the way in which we organize our sector and our sector specialism in the bank. I suppose we, historically we would have had an agri sector, we'd have had a tech sector, we'd have had a software sector. And increasingly what we're seeing is all these sectors are getting blurred uh, and, and merged in together. And this is why we find ourselves with clean tech and med tech and agri tech and food science. And one of the key things that we are looking to do now is to reorganize the manner in which we approach that market because increasingly we are seeing the, the new business startups and the requests for innovation and the requests for finance are coming not from the traditional silos uh, of, of individual business, but they're coming from that merger and amalgamation of the different areas. And that's the second thing that we are committed to doing uh, in business banking. And as I say, with those seed funds, uh, which you have out there in conjunction with Enterprise Ireland, is looking at ways in which we can bring those seed funds and those seed tech funds to the agri and the food space, because we do believe uh, to try and capitalize on some of the uh, uh, issues and plans and ideas that are out there, whether it's in terms of measuring carbon footprint in farms or whether it's in terms of uh, perhaps uh, getting new ways of having healthier foods or, or packaging associated with foods, there will be huge opportunities and we have plenty of graduates and plenty of innovators and entrepreneurs out there who will be looking to try and uh, set up businesses to capitalise that and they are all spin-offs spin -offs from the agri and the food sector here uh, in Ireland. I suppose that the, the third thing that we need to do then is to look and expand the market and educate the market about the products that we, uh, that, that we have out there. Uh, far too many of producers and far too many of the farmers are still looking at the single, the current accounts, the deposit accounts and the lending uh, products as opposed to looking uh, a bit wider afield, particularly with expanding businesses at how they can use invoice discounting perhaps uh, to grow and expand their business or indeed use trade finance products. And the third area that we will be looking at, looking to uh, commit to the market is trying to see as to how we can educate uh, that market around our products and how they can expand uh, and utilize more innovative ways of financing uh, their own trade and their own expansion. And finally, the last area which we are, are, are committed to doing uh, and which I talked uh, last night at a seminar with, with, with Matt is trying to identify new products for the sector, particularly around the commodities risks that uh, these businesses, uh, uh, farmers and indeed uh, co-op businesses, our, our agribusinesses are carrying, around the volatility which we're seeing in commodity prices, both on the input and the output side, and ways in which we can uh, generate products and uh, come up with products and ideas which will enable uh, businesses to take some of that risk, farmers and businesses to take some of the risk uh, out, out of their sector and out of their, uh, out of their, own, uh, out of their own business. So, uh, as I say, I do believe that uh, the agri-sector and the food sector is vitally important. It's in very good health at present uh, in the Irish economy. It has a huge uh, benefit and huge role to play in the expansion uh, and the return to growth of the Irish economy. And we in the Bank of Ireland are absolutely committed to doing what we can to support that growth. And the announcement of our fund here today is a major step in trying to demonstrate that commitment, as indeed is our sponsorship of the conference today. And I look forward to working with you all in the industry in the weeks and months ahead. Thank you very much.